Greetings from Seoul, Korea, and welcome to the GSL. Can you hear me okay, Dan? Yeah, I hear you fine. Can you? I can't hear you. I think my volume's turned off my headsets. <laughs> we are here uh, at the GSL. I'm going to have to get my audio fixed. I don't know what, what's going on. Actually, uh, push it in more. You know what's the problem? Uh, there you is go. Is that during the setup, when they were setting up the uh, stage day, I guess I didn't plug it all in. Sorry about that. All right, we're here at the GSL. Code S. And we have a lot of exciting matches today, Artosis. Yes, we do, Tasteless. By the way, I'm feeling much better today. I'm not completely, completely He's still well. a little bit sick. I'm not going to be able to yell too much, but I feel so much better than yesterday. I'm not going to look like a zombie today. So thank you for all the kind wishes from everyone. You're just, uh, you're just a little guy, man. Little you're suffering. You're a suffering, sick human being. Yeah, I, that's true. And you had to work all day yesterday. That's hard. Yeah, I worked yeah. all day yesterday. It was it's pretty rough. crazy. Pretty crazy. Yeah, I'm feeling uh, pretty good today, <gasps> and we have a very excited. Oh, there, there he is. is. It's Nesty. It's Nesty. He's walking. He's gonna come on camera. There he is. I can feel his like Gosu aura like pulsing through my body. Creep starts to appear on Tasteless's like, face. Ah! It's like, like there's another creep tumor but it's here. Creep. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a weird birthmark. It is creep. Yeah. Um, look, man, this is gonna be a pretty epic day. We start off with. About the best Terran versus Terran you could ever ask to see. Yes, it's uh, unbelievable. MVP against Bomber. Yeah. Now, uh, it is, in my strong opinion, that MVP is actually better TVT than Bomber. But, historically, Bomber has done really well against MVP. He yeah. really has. He beat MVP in the Kode Finals once. And uh, in most of their matchups, most times they met. In fact, in the MLG Global Invitational that JP and myself are commentating, uh... In the winner bracket, Bomber took out MVP as well. So, Bomber's been doing good against MVP. Yeah, there's a chance that um, MVP could win. Uh, you know, Bomber and MVP, I, they're, they're gods, it, but they're different yeah. types of gods. You know, they're MVP really is, good. like, always really consistently well, good. Well, Bomber is more like Hercules. All right, and uh, MVP is Zeus. Wow, actually, that's pretty good. Yeah, I thought that was pretty all right. Actually, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually really impressed with you right now. So... You are back, Artosis. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. That's it. This guy. You're that making me feel all like this, Tasteless. Like a little happy uh, emoticon? Yeah. You know, when I had that shirt, I'd wear that in the States. Nobody knew what that was. I know, but... I was like, really? I've had, like, complex like, emoticon shirts on here, and girls knew. Girls knew what they were. Remember that. You get an emoticon t-shirt. Yeah. Girls in Korea are going to recognize it. Everyone's going to know. Knows, man. People are like, what is that? I'm like, you don't... You don't, you don't see, see the face? Like, all right. Here is the bracket so far. As you can see, yesterday, Clyde, MMA, Happy, and Coca are the survivors. Today, we have MVP against Bomber, Nessie against Virus, Gonzi against Lenok, and finally, Dong Gu against Supernova. All Protosses have been eliminated. That's right. Only Terrans and Zergs left. Yeah, it's like uh, an alien movie, Tasteless. An alien movie without Predator in it. Yeah, it's like Aliens versus Predator, except with just actually aliens. <laughs> just Aliens versus humans, man. Like Alien 4. No, not Alien 4. Any other alien. Yeah, please not Alien 4. Well, I tell you, you know, it has the best got a lot of scene there's ever been anywhere. Oh, yeah. Like, when it's that actually one, no, I I know, oh, wait, let me guess. I think I know the scene. The uh, part where the alien... Uh, there's like a hole in the spaceship, yeah. and he like gets sucked against it, and it like sucks his like yeah. organs and it, like, body. sucks him out at like, the size of... He's like, imagine your whole body being sucked out through that right there. That would Look at that. suck. <laughs> you are such a nerd. Oh, I wish I wish I didn't know you. Alien were such 4 a nerd. is actually I don't think it's that good. You know, Alien I don't was made it, though, forever ago. Like the first Alien movie was like the 79 first, or something. The movie Alien if, if people haven't seen the movie first movie Alien, that's actually so well done. This? For a movie that old? Are you kidding me? Yeah. You kidding me? It's so scary. They do the perfect effect of not really showing you what the alien. Ripley, of yeah, course. Yeah. Aliens two and three ass. is good too, actually. But the thing is that, that alien they have different directors. So the problem is that you there's like this fundamental like shift in, you know, the way that directors are trying to portray it. I don't. Maybe I should watch Alien Four again. I know I'm not much of a movie guy, but for some reason, do you want to like come over and we have like a movie night? You know, you've been promising me to watch with me. Uh, Troll 2 and Human Centipede. You've been promising to do that with oh, me. Oh, I'll watch Human yeah, Centipede. You're, just, you're not you. keeping your end of the bargain, man. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm like waiting to be invited over like each Saturday night. I'm like sitting on my couch with my phone just waiting for Tasteless to call. <laughs> I'm sorry. And if he calls me, I think it's a special date just for me and him to do that. And he's like, hey, do you want to come out with me and the guys? And I'm like, 
Yeah. <laughs> I come out anyways, and I'm just, I don't get enough attention. It's actually terrible. I don't talk to you the whole time and stuff. It's bad, man. <laughs> I have to try to amuse your friends. I'm like, it's tough, so man. what do you like? It's tough like a tasteless, man. Yeah. All right. It's settled. Now pick. You want to watch Troll 2 or, or Human Centipede? I, I need to go with Human Centipede. You haven't seen that yet, have you? No. I can't wait, man. <laughs> can't wait. We should cast it. We could cast us watching the human centipede. That's actually a really good idea. Maybe we should do we that. We should actually do that. Huh. We'll like outdo Mystery Science Theater 3000. Oh, well, Crow is like then. on the phone. He's like yelling at me. I'm like, you're a puppet, Crow. <laughs> you're a puppet. And then he just falls down in nothingness because he is a puppet. He's just like caught out the, the reality of it. All right, here's our first player, MVP. Ranked first in the GSL, going to BlizzCon. Three-time GSL champion, one-time MLG champion. Lord of the Terrans. He's looking like mystical in this picture. I know, man. He is a final boss of StarCraft 2. He's the ultimate final boss. Like, when boss. you're fighting through the seven layers of hell, he's at the bottom. He's actually, like, yeah. He's like, okay, you know, like, in some, like, uh, Japanese-style games, like, when you get to the last level, you actually have to fight every boss mm -hmm. again. That's what it's like. And then you him. kill the guy that's supposed to be the last boss, and there's another boss. But he's like, no, that's... he's like, not. you kill his human form, but he comes out as, like, a demon again. Yeah. Or like, he's, like, dead. That's MVP. And, like, you know that the game's almost over because you're in, like, some, like, ultimate, like, X dimension. You're, like, flying through space, standing on a rock. <laughs> yes. You know what I'm talking? You're, like, fighting, I know exactly like... what you're talking about. That's every RPG I've ever played. Yeah, man. Well, there he is. Sickest badass killer. He's actually like, he's just so good. And the real problem with going up against him is that he can do basically anything. And he will do basically everything yeah. and anything. And uh, just to keep talking about him, even though we're looking at Bomber right there, um, you know, I've seen some people arguing lately who's the highest skill player to switch over to StarCraft 2. And as of recently, like, recent skill in StarCraft 2. The one that we've seen in the GSL, the highest skill in StarCraft 1, is MVP. It hit a top four of an OSL and then switched over. So that's, like, unbelievable. No one else has really yeah. come close to that in recent times, like, within <clears throat> the last year. Uh, Bomber over here. Look, this guy, when he's playing at his best, it's actually the best I've ever seen anybody play, ever. Yeah, some of his games make me just step back and be like, oh, my God, who are you? And then yeah. I'm like, oh, I know you really well. You used to translate for me in the Easter House. Yeah. You used to live with Bomber. Um, he's a really friendly guy. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Um, the thing about Bomber is that he's not always consistent. Yeah, he's definitely not. He's definitely not. Like sometimes you know? he's like a god, and then other times I'm like, sometimes I don't know if he, you're like tired or anxious or what. Yeah. Sometimes he doesn't pick his strategies perfectly, which is exactly what MVP does, but Bomber seems to have MVP's number. He has it on speed dial, Tasteless. He's, uh, he's, yeah, he definitely has it on speed dial. All right, uh, Metalopolis. We've been seeing more and more people living in Metalopolis. 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 Guys, we can't talk today. We've seen a lot of people eliminating Metalopolis. Yeah. Uh, and nowadays. in fact, he is one that does it quite often. Yeah. He is just done with that map. It might indicate that he has a lot more training on the ladder than in custom games. Belcher Beach eliminated by uh, MVP. I don't really know why, but. Eh. You know, just a preference. It is what it is. Fourth match of the best Terrans with Will, the defending champion, I'm going to be defend his honor once again. But that's how you do it. You say the fourth match of the best Terrans. Will there will the defending champion, I am MVP, defend his honor once again? And then I use that and I segue out of it. Wow. I go, well, we're gonna find out soon as the game has now loaded. <laughs> so get ready for MVP against Bomber, the two best Terrans in the world. Facing off early on here. One will move on to the round of eight. The other will be eliminated and have to wait until the next GSL Code S season. I'm Tasteless with Mizartosis. And we're here at the GSL. How was that? Was that good? That was really good. Thank you. Thank you to our sponsors. In the upper right... Our yellow Terran, the Game Genie Terran, he is... I am MVP. MVP. Now down to the bottom left. 
his opponent, perhaps the underdog in the situation, but he is a god nonetheless. His ID? Hotel Bama. I actually have never been so excited for a TV team. Yeah, this well, it's the best life. TVT you can get. Yeah, go Terran! Oh some yeah, young fans out there. Oh yeah, he had like the he had like the tongue of somebody in Kiss. Yeah, man, he had a total gene. He actually tongue. had like the tongue of Diablo. <laughs> All right, maybe he's part snake. Reptilians are real. Reptilians are real. I was like, <laughs> the bar audience doesn't know what reptilians are. There's actually like an underground conspiracy theory that like. Dinosaurs, like some of them survived, and like they like make themselves look like humans or something, mm. and like they secretly control everything, They're, like reptilians. Like people think, like, like uh, what was that? I saw because I went on a site. I was like reading about. It. I was like laughing my ass off. But, yeah. Like, someone thought uh, Larry King and uh, like Mitt Romney were reptilians. Like, yeah. <laughs> They're like, look at this Photoshop thing of them blinking sideways like a cat or something. <laughs> It is funny, man. It's pretty hilarious. Well, then I'm like, wow, there are real problems in the world, and you think that there are people that are secretly reptiles. And here's what's funny about it is there's, judging from our large, massive audience base, I think we've just lost at least one viewer. Well, He's one like, guy is like, it. they're real. Yeah, I don't I don't know if we lost him, but he was already because lost. Because if he actually it. thinks reptilians are real, man. He's like, Bomber's a reptilian. I'm like, ah. Well, he's got to keep watching. He's pretty sure about Nesty, at least. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, if there's going to be reptilian. Hell, I even think Nesty's a reptilian. <laughs> 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 All right. So, we have a... Whoa! we got a Ghost Academy here. Oh, sickness. This is really interesting. Bomber. I think this is like the first time I've seen a Ghost Academy this early um, in TBT. Well, Actually, you know, I guess just ever. This is a really, really cool build, and for several reasons. First off, uh, quick Ghost Academy. This is actually a build that will do well against any sort of Banshee play. They do a lot oh, of damage smart. against light things like Hellions. But of course, this will probably be to get Cloak. I'm surprised he hasn't got another gas. Maybe it's not to get Cloak. Um, because, well, oh, this might just be the Marine Ghost attack, but you can always get Cloak and just walk up in their base and kill a bunch of SCVs. But what you can also do is get Snipe. You walk up with your Marines and Ghosts. Oh, you, you can snipe the... Uh... You snipe any Marines. Yeah. And, it, I mean, it deals a ridiculous amount of damage immediately to those Marines. You're going to basically one-shot them. And oh, my God, it just got yeah, more interesting. Our this is, is, he's taking a gold base. This is going to be really cool, man. It, I mean, without a bunker there... He's going to take out SCVs, Marines, everything so quickly. Right now, Bomber going with uh, the most unorthodox build against, right now, MVP, who's actually going for a very middle-of-the-road build. This is clearly a build where Bomber has actually tailored the strategy specifically for MVP. This is pretty he's cool, in, All right. And he I actually only made one Ghost, and now he's making another Marine. Oh, my God, he spotted the expansion. I'm confused that he made just one Ghost, but okay. Well, we'll here's see how this goes. Normally, you, you want to see like. Oh, a no, this is actually gets bad, Artosis. He's going to kill that SCV. And mm -hmm. the timing attack is going to be messed up. Well, we do have a Hellion on the way. More Marines being rallied out by Bomber. Getting combat shields as well. Yeah, and he has to send another SCV, man. It's pretty rough. Oh, my God. And down goes that depot. Yeah, I don't know. I think right now MVP said, wait a minute. Okay, I think it was... Oh! Oh, nice. Killed uh, about three Marines there. It might run pretty well here. Yeah, the Ghost has more hit points than Marines. It does a lot of damage to him. 20 burst light. And look at that. A lot of stuff being taken down right away. Oh, Bomber targeting that supply oh. depot. But it does get repaired, and MVP holds for now. Well, here's <laughs> the problem right now for him is that the element of surprise is just gone. Um... He it's knows that there's a gold base over here. He knows he needs to engage that pretty quickly here. And I find it hard to believe that um, with the tech lab now up, that he can actually defend from Cloak Banshees with that gold base uh, and defend from any yeah. Hellions or you know anything else that's coming Cloak up. Cloak Banshees and Hellions against just Rally Marines. Stim just starting out. Combat Shield is done. But this is, this is bad news, man. Look, a mule already going down. MVP ain't having none of it. Says no. Says Hercules, I'm still your father. Is Hercules the one with the Achilles heel? Or is that no, a, that's Achilles. Oh, wow. This is really embarrassing. <laughs> I got to get out of here. Oh, this is the problem with doing live TV. Sometimes you say something dumb. 
What did I say in that last response? I for some reason thought that Willie Mammoths and humans actually didn't live at the same yeah, time. Yeah, like, I was, no. I was just, like actually just completely incorrect. It's like you're like Willie Mammoths were the arch enemies of dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. that's not actually the case, buddy. <laughs> You're like, yeah, they were. I'm like, I'm pretty sure dinosaurs built the pyramids. You're like, oh, Nick, you can't say that on TV, man. It's so wrong. <laughs> and like, as I said it, as the word slipped out of my mouth, I'm like, oh, you know what? Actually, I'm not entirely sure about this. Yeah. I'm like, well, I guess it's just too late. It's too late. It's just I can either scramble now. and be like, I'm joking, you guys. Of course, I didn't know that. Or <laughs> just go with or it. Or I can fine. just go with it. It's actually charming. No, the best thing, well, the, the way to get out of that is you just make fun of yourself. Yeah, that's actually very true. All right. So, right now, Bomber getting attacked by this MVP Banshee. He does have Cloak ready. This could be pretty deadly. We do have one scan ready, but only one. Now, remember, he doesn't know how many scans his opponent has, so yeah. it's, a, it's a tough situation. Because you can always bluff and just move forward with the Marines. Killing off a lot of Marines here, Tasteless. I don't think Bomber's going to be in good shape in this game. No, I, I don't think so either. I, I mean, he's playing a very good game right now. He is up on supply, not by a ton. But look at this. Just beautiful double ban Banshee harassment. Oh, nice turret completion there. You know, I like that you said that nice turret completion because SCVs never get the credit. Like, you have a Marine that takes down a Colossus, you're like, oh my god. But when an SCV, like, completes a crucial turret, no one... There's no award for that SCV. No, their, their, their names will have never a, be in the credits of this, uh, you of this know, game. The Banshee has a kills count, but the SCV doesn't have a built count. And that's just sad. Oh, they so thank do you. That. Thank you for pointing that out, Faceless. Oh, well, key player. Now, here's the problem is he's having to defend with Banshees in two locations. Yeah. And they oh, both wow. have sick amounts of kills. Oh. 16 on the one in the main. Oh, oh nice. That Good. one had 10. Can I just point out he saw that the Banshee only had two hit points and only stemmed at one Marine? Pretty smart. Forward, he's like, well, I'm actually the best player ever. Next to the guy he's playing. Yeah. yeah. And the guy that the winner of this match is going to have to play. But after that, yeah. 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 He's at least got the bronze. Yeah. All right. He's got a nice depot wall over here. Uh, the economy right now uh, for Bomber is going to pick up. He's got enough SCVs at the gold base. Uh, S, uh, MVP, by the way, going straight into Mech, saying, you know what? You know what beats Marines and Marauders? Mech. And the thing is, he can actually turtle for a very long period of time before he has to move out. So the economic oh, wow. the economic advantage there for him, um, for Bomber might go away. And what that means is that if I were Bomber right now, and since I'm sticking with this unit composition, I would take the other gold base. Oh, that's think a about cute how smart idea. that is. Yeah, that's take, a cute idea. Take the other gold base. You know, it's really far away, but he definitely has map control for a while. Uh oh, here. don't do it, MVP. You know, how long will Bomber keep map control? Probably a very long time here. MVP's going to have to turtle off three base while he really masses up his units. But especially on a map like this that's just so thin, that's really going to pay off for him. Bomber, though, definitely staying the course with his Green Marauder, getting his, his medevacs with the Starport, getting that reactor up. A 17 kill Banshee's back, Jason, so he's about to run out of close. Oh, nice maneuvering here by MVP, actually oh going in the God. opposite direction, the less expected direction. He will get it. The route less traveled, oh, some may oh. say. Oh, my what? God. What? MVP actually is like so smart. He like knew the, move, the way Bomber's going to move his reins. You like, know what? Actually, I'm going to go directly the opposite way. Eric Schmidt better watch out, man. Google Maps is gone. It's all about MVP maps right now, man. Oh, yeah. He knows every route. He does. It's like you need a, the quickest Dick route tries to, to get 7 house erased from it. It's like, sorry, Dick Cheney, I'm MVP. <laughs> <laughs> Dick mean, Cheney actually did that, right? He actually got his, his house removed from that. Google Maps. That's or hilarious, though. I'm like, well, you were a crazy person. You know, he doesn't want the death squads to find him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we, we have SCVs mining here. Not the gold base. MVP's getting multiple command centers right now because his strategy is very gas dependent, relying mostly on siege tanks with some Hellions mixed in, of course. But that's going to give him a mineral surplus, which allows him to get a lot of orbitals. It's a pretty sweet combo, Tasteless LOL. It's pretty neat. Um, Bomber is actually doing this exactly the way you're supposed to with Mech. You can only send out a few units of Banshees or Hellions. And while these Hellions are running into some Marauder resistance and a sick building wall in there, so what is like he doing? Doesn't end up doing very much. He's like, well, I guess I'm just gonna lose these. Yeah, it's 
not okay, Artosis. It's totally fine, Tasteless. Right now, we do have a big supply uh, equalness. So I think it's a difference, and I looked at it, and it suddenly equaled up, so I'm like, never mind. I'll be quiet. I think what he realized is that there's actually no <laughs> army in position. And now he gains oh, a lot of ground no. right there. Goodbye to all those Marines. They got completely vaporized. And all he has to do is get these siege tanks in siege mode here. And it's really bad news. Bomber kind of moving in the middle. But uh, MVP just has to be careful. If he does not spread himself too thin, Mech, it, I mean, it's a proven thing. Mech kills uh, Green Marauder. Well, as it just deals more damage. Enough. You just have to invest in yeah. those units for the late game. And now he's going to take the gold base. Yeah, he's uh, double expanding, getting his turrets up all over the place. He even has Vikings around the map waiting for medevacs. Just does not want to be dropped. Sensor tower is even going up. And MVP is actually playing this just perfect, Tasteless. He's going to be perfectly turtled. And then eventually what's going to happen is Bomber is going to have to run Marines and Marauders into siege tanks. He's going to lose them. He's going to max out maybe one more time, run him into siege tanks again, and we're going to go on to game number two. Probably. I, I do see MVP winning this right now. Yeah. I just... Well, it's, you know, it's it's like equal supplies. Yeah, it just... Yeah. It's... MVP is actually slightly up in SCVs, 61 to 56. But he's got 14 Ooh. tanks already, which is a pretty big deal. I'm trying to snipe some with these, uh, these Vikings. Oh, nice. He is going to get it. Does lose two Vikings in a way. But These that's Marines fine. are like, get back here! <laughs> I love the girl that drove the medevac. Actually, is the is the girl in the medevac hot? Um, hold on, let me find a medevac. Let's find a I'll medevac. You know. Let's figure out if she's hot. <laughs> it's like these other things that matter right now. Yeah, she is. She's got a nice face. She's got that well, suit on. You know what I mean? She's she's cute. She's cute. Yeah, she's cute. The Marauder's handsome. How do you know the Marauder's not a girl? That, that suit just, like, changes Handsome is voice. actually completely an adjective you can use for a girl. It just hasn't been used that way since, like, the 20s. I know, but language is all based off of use, man. Well, guess what? I'm bringing it back. <laughs> Are you turning this around? Everything on this map is handsome, faceless. All right. Well, he's got this great position on his opponent now. This, this is the problem with going uh, Marine Marauder. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he kind of had to to defend that gold base, but it's like, well, where do you go from here? I mean, well, it's a cute idea. Uh, I like his opening build. But, you know, MVP is just playing this map to perfection. He's playing TVT to perfection here. We do have another factory going up for uh, Bomber, so he's definitely going to get some more Siege Shanks knowing he needs them. And eventually, we're going to have to see our players uh, transition into Battle Cruisers. That's just the way this is going to end up going. Uh, and it's going to be a slightly harder transition. You know, you know what Bomber. I actually wonder is, um, I mean, Bomber, I think, could, technically could just skip the entire mech route and just go directly for battle cruisers the moment that he sees MVP sieging up. I mean, why not just do that? Think about that. You can't, you you can't know, actually run into the Marines maybe. and Marauders, they'll, they'll kill you, but just but like a direct switch. The one thing I'd be scared of, if he doesn't have some temporary additional siege shank coverage, he doesn't hit siege shanks in between there. Uh, now that MVP is maxed, he can actually just start pushing. That's you know, true. He can just do a slow push across the map, and the battle cruisers will not be out in time. To actually stop MVP, and in addition to that, MVP can just throw up a ton of Vikings, and Vikings beat Battle Cruisers, which means now Bomber has to go Vikings as well, and then he has Marine Marauder against Mech pushing him, and it's just like, ew. So, I mean, you need Sea Chanks in that equation as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, we do have both players going pretty heavy starport right now. More and more orbitals being made by MVP. And MVP moving down this side. He does not want Bomber to have that base. Pretty powerful move right here. Put his Hellions in the front to take all the damage. Very well done. And if he secures that base, Tasteless, it's pretty good. Yeah, he's starting to inch forward here. But actually, Bomber is securing the base on the other side as well. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised that. that he actually let him take that. He doesn't seem to quite be controlling that one point on the map very well. Well, you know, it's going to be hard to uh, control everything at once. MVP's going to have to... You know, switch back and forth. So, MVP adding all his uh, star ports as well. Fusion core is going up for both players. Bombers finishing a little bit quicker, I believe. Who's going to have the battle cruiser count lead? Uh, well, we'll have to see who chooses to make battle cruisers. Uh, MVP is choosing Banshees first, which I really like. No reason to put in battle cruisers right this second. 
Yeah, might as well do some banshee harassment first. Yep. Add some banshees in there. Well, there's definitely no way the bomber can just like run into MVP. Um, as far as I can tell, me, MVP just says, "Look at that." Yeah. Yeah, no, you, it's not something that's breakable. How do you break that? It's unbreakable, like Bruce Willis. Oh, that movie was pretty bad. Yeah, it really was. Actually, it like wasn't as bad as I like I remember it, but like. Yeah, I think it was actually. I think you were right the first time. I was like, I've seen it mul multiple times, but like, uh, I don't know. Man. They call me Mr. Glass. Yeah, I was. Because I break my glass. Okay, here we go. Uh, he's actually driving him out. Doing a little bit more domination. Every uh, small amount on the map uh, that you can take is worth it. Nice. Banshee's coming over, taking out the siege takes. You know, with no siege takes there, MVP is free to push forward in various locations like we already see him doing. There's Funny. not going to be enough breathing room here for Bomber if MVP starts to take more of this map. By the way, he's been doing, we have to point this out, he's oh. done such an amazing job of shooting down um, these medevacs, these Vikings. Yeah. Uh, you know, right now, both of them getting basically every single upgrade in the game, getting ready for the ultimate battles that will occur. But Bomber's grasp on the map is somewhat tenuous. You know, it's... MVP can't come too out of position because that is a lot of Marines and Marauders and he might be able to get run around, but MVP is pushing slowly but surely forward. He's being very patient with this. Yeah. He knows Bomber's good. He respects Bomber's play style, but he's basically just saying, all right, look, I... Uh... If MVP simply keeps a higher Viking count and continues to push forward slowly, I mean, that's it. Nice amount of Vikings for Bomber right now. Yeah, Bomber definitely doing a good job catching up here. You can see the small number of siege tanks that are around here for Bomber, uh, mainly because he went Marine Marauder early on, um, means that the, only have, the Banshees only have to you know, shoot down two or three and suddenly an entire position is lost. MVP starting to throw away his SCVs at yep. the moment. We'll see SCVs suicide yeah. here shortly. He cannot make any more units, so he has to free up supply. See? Ravens being made for both players as well. MVP, by the way, has... 20 seed shanks. Oh, I love how he targets a seed shank. He's like, well, maybe I can kill this. Because seed shanks are actually like some of the only units that are still important right now. Yeah. The seed tank remains important throughout the entire <laughs> TD team. MVP finds four Marines he had that he forgot about. <laughs> Just sends them in. <laughs> He's like, all right, guys, go. <laughs> go, I guys, forgot about go. you guys. Oh, nice. Taking out some SCVs here. Yeah, that's always annoying when you take out SCVs on gas, especially. Because you do have to mine gas this if these mules don't do that yet. We're waiting for the expansion pack of StarCraft 2. <laughs> Imagine that. That'd be hilarious. Drop the mules on gas. Sick. They, they drop the mule and it goes down that little tube on the top of the refinery. <laughs> <laughs> Just shoots a lot That's of like gas. That's like what the out. tube is for, is like so that the mules can like shoot down in there. <laughs> I like that idea. Well, we do have a couple of battle cruisers in production for Bomber, as well as for MVP. MVP adding in some Thors as well. He does have plus two attack on his uh, Sea Shanks, which means those Thors are going to do six splash damage to Viking Clouds. We have 21 Vikings for MVP right now, 20 for Bomber. So that's going to be one of the most important numbers. And Ravens, of course, are going to count as well. Three for Bomber, two for MVP. So it's pretty close, except for the fact that there's a Thor out. And there will be some more Thors as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Looks I'm like sorry. the sensor tower is going to go down, and I think this is something that uh, he really right. should have done a while Whoa. ago. All right, finally Bomber. Sorry, Ready Tasteless, Bomber. but Bomber is doing a very important move right now. He's going to throw some point fence drones down to stop turrets and do a big drop in MVP's main. This is the type of move he has to do right now as he gets further and further push. All right, Vikings are coming in there, so he needs to drop that stuff pretty quickly. One oh. of one is shot down before he even gets a chance to unload. And, I mean, those Marauders could do some decent damage, but Battle Crews are coming in. Eh. Negligible. Yeah. Get rid of that supply anyway, so, so it's fine. All right, so right now in the middle of the map, though, we do have a huge push forward by MVP. A couple Thors battling a Battle Cruiser. A Battle Cruiser actually with high armor. Pretty good against the Thor. All right, with the Viking fleet is going to engage here. Who's got more? Targeting down the Ravens first, being so expensive. Oh, oh, run, 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 Oh, my God. That's the new Hunter Seeker missile. That's pretty scary, Tasteless. Oh, my God. Wow. That was impressive. Oh, my God. 
this matchup's a lot cooler now that that Hunter Seeker was just quicker. Thank you, David Kim. Thank you, David Kim. All right, Siege Tank sieging up. This expansion somewhat irrelevant. It doesn't have any minerals at it, but again, it's more position that's lost, and that is going to give him access to the upper and right center ex uh, expansion. It's still got about a thousand units of gas at it, so that's you know, it's a few yeah, less. Yeah, gas is more important right now than minerals too. And MVP guys, uh, you might have uh, missed this, but he has nine thousand minerals and uh, about four thousand five hundred <laughs> gas. Bomber right? has no minerals. And yeah, fifty so less supply. MVP can actually throw his entire army away and remake it. Well, not mining anything right now. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Bomber MVP. is definitely going to lose this. Well, MVP won this a long time ago when he slowly took the center with his seed shanks. Yeah, I remember actually... watching that one moment, and I'm like, okay, I think I see the end of this game now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, your mech is better than Marine Marauder. It's... But that's that's one of the things, that's one of the reasons why Bomber isn't the best hero in the world. You know, it's he does things like this where... He's like, well, I think I'll go Marine Marauder this game. And those are the games that well, you see him lose. It's so like, games you it's see like him a win, myopic uh, decision because I can see the strategy being beautiful. I rush for ghosts. I take the gold base. Yeah. Two unusual things at once. It's going to be a strategy that nobody would expect coming. But then the problem is that he's like, but then what happens? Now I'm on crossfire. I'm stuck going Marines and Marauders. I need to defend an expansion that's far away. And my opponent, all he has to do is sit there and mech. Well, we have the Thors coming in, running away from those battle cruisers. They want to target oh. down Vikings. And Thor, looks like they're... This, this I think is about to be GG here. Well, you know, as soon as Bomber loses his only armor, he definitely will have to leave. And as the battle cruisers go down, only Vikings left, that doesn't really do anything. The supply of Bomber plummeting right now. GG. Bombing, some might say. What, what, well. And MVP. Absolutely manhandling Bomber. Despite it being a long game, he was in control forever. He was a boss nerd. He was. There's no denying that. He wore the nerd daddy pants. Wow, look at Bomber. He does not look happy with that. You know, he um, really just didn't have a plan for the late game. Well, what are you, you going to do after MVP takes you know, the entire map? You it's know? great to go... Uh, for battle cruisers in the late game, especially on that map. I mean, that's smart, switch over to Sky Terran. But I feel when I see Bomber play, like, you know, when you're that good, sometimes it's hard to figure out exactly what you should do against someone that's just slightly better than you. Because yeah. who does he practice with to play MVP? I bet you Bomber with that strategy beats almost every Terran in the world yeah. almost every single game. So he's like, well, this one I feel really comfortable with. I'm going to do it. But actually, let's look at this theoretically, Bomber. Your, your strategy is actually much worse than what MVP is doing. It's much, much worse. Well, if you don't win in, like, the mid-game... Siege tanks are the best unit in the matchup. Yeah, because they can deal the most damage, and they allow you to control the most position. And on a map like Crossfire, it's, it's very narrow, so you can cut the map in half, like, easier than any other map. Yeah. And that's, there was this moment where I just saw that Bomber didn't have his army in position, and, and MVP just walked to the middle of the map, sieged up, and suddenly Bomber's like, oh, I guess the map is cut in half for the rest of this game. And then, I mean, he starts pushing. It gets it gets messy, man. So MVP just crushing that game. I think it's going to be very hard for Bomber to come back after a devastating defeat like that. It's, you know, while it's hard to see anyone get 2 0 it's, like, super hard to see MVP getting 2 0 from here. Yeah, you know? no kidding. Bomber still could do this. He could still come back. You know, I feel like MVP is going to choose all the right strategies like always, and Bomber is going to have a hard time against that. Yeah, we I, will I, see. I, that's the thing about MVP. He's always actually doing the right build. Yeah. Like, you know, when he does command center first, I'm like, oh, yeah, I guess it makes sense against this pl player, you know, on this map. And then when I see him, like, cheese, I'm like, actually, I think this is probably the right moment to cheese, too. Like, I didn't expect that yeah. either, but I guess it makes yeah. sense. No, he he's one of the greatest plan planners in the game. Yeah. And you really have to give him mad, mad, mad props because he's also like one of the best macro, one of the best micro, one of the best strategy, but he's like the RPG character where his stats are maxed out. Yeah. You know what I'm talking he about? He joins your party just for a little bit and you're like, oh, I wish I could have this guy forever. I know. And then but it's just through like the end half Or like he dies and I'm like, no, he wouldn't die. His stats are yeah, way too good. Yeah. He would be fine. It's going to be like my healing character that dies with my secondary one, the one yeah. that's not the hot girl in the video game. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Absolutely, I do. Well, next map, Terminus, Re. This is a very different map from Crossfire. <laughs> it is. It's a much bigger map, but it's definitely a map that you can control with Siege Tanks, which again, as is every map. Oh, yeah. Correctly. But you can get an additional expansion up right away. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I would not 
hate either of these players for going uh, for a, a Marine Tank or Marine Marauder. Uh, Siege Tank, you know, like Clyde did against, I believe it was MVP, you know, where you do several transitions throughout the game. Control the map with Marine Marauder, take extra bases, go mass Siege Tank, switch to Sky Tank. Uh, but even when Clyde did that, basically perfect transitions, MVP still ended up beating him. So, you know. Well, the I, problem with, with it's just MVP's like ranked number one in a tournament. There's just like no other way to yeah. put it. It's like, well, I don't know. I mean, like, Bomber wins everything. Yeah. It's so funny to say that against Bomber. It's like, well, Bomber, I don't know, man. But I don't know if Bomber has the snowball's chance in hell, guys. I just don't actually know. Seriously. I would trust Bomber to do anything, but this is maybe one I don't trust him so much on. I don't know what strategy he's going to choose here. I hope he chooses Cloak Banshee, though. He's so good at that. I, I he transitions out of Cloak Banshee like no other. I could see MVP going for Command Center first. Could see it. You know what he might do? He's MVP and he might cheese. I could actually see that. He could. He could do that, too. It's, just, it's, it's so hard to predict MVP, but once uh, the game develops, you actually see that, you know, he is just like doing the right thing. It's so weird. You know, it's funny because another player we say similar things about is Jalizer, but it's two totally different tastes. Like, MVP, yeah. when he when you finally see what he has planned, you're like, oh, yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah. That's so smart. And then when you uh, see Jalizer do it, you're like, really? And then it works. And you're like, that's Jalizer, guys. Like, he, he, <laughs> he rolls a die. He has special rules for him. Yeah, it's, um, it's interesting. We've been informed that the Korean Observer is having trouble with his keyboard. Oh, is he? So, we're going to get that sorted out. I spilt a Coke on it earlier. I didn't want to tell anyone. It's getting all sticky now. Oh, sticky keyboards are the worst. I had this one keyboard that I used for like four years in a row. Yeah. Like nonstop. And then I just spilt an orange juice on it. And I was like, oh, no. And the yeah. next day it didn't work. And I was like, ah, it's all oh. sticky. That is terrible. That's all right. I went down and bought the same keyboard again. I just got a new keyboard. I did too. Yeah. It's good. Have Coach, you tried you it, give yet? it to us? Oh my god, yeah, it's amazing, it's, man. Yeah, it's a nice keyboard. I like it's one it. One of those Sky Digitals. It's just so good. It's like just the keys are just so amazing. Um, Artosis, yes. we might have to, we actually might have to kill time for a little bit here. Yes, we do. Um, sorry. Go ahead and ask me ask me something. Ask, ask me, something. me something. You're pretty imposing today, aren't you? I am. I'm needy. Yeah, I guess Go. so. Go. Okay. Um, tasteless. What is your favorite reptile? Ooh. I think you asked me that once. Ke um, chameleon? Chameleon. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, chameleons are badasses. Yeah? Because their eyes go like this. And then they shoot stuff with their tongue and they grab it. That's They're true. catching nerd flies. They are catching nerd flies, man. Imagine a nerd chameleon. He'd have to have two sets of glasses because his eyes are moving everywhere. Oh, that is so interesting. He can only use contacts. Nerds don't use contacts. They use glasses. So Some nerds use contacts. I think he'd have to have just two monocles or something. You'd be like the <laughs> sickest. <laughs> monocle have chameleon? Top hat on. This is like sicker than Pirate Bird is monocle chameleon? Yeah. Oh, my God. He's got like his really <laughs> weird like toed, like webbed hand, like holding... Like some brandy in like one of those stemmed glasses, like with his two eyes looking everywhere with monocles. He's got a vest on with yeah. a pocket watch. Oh my god, he has a pocket watch. Monocle chameleon. You heard it here. We just came up with it. That is so funny. The imagery of a chameleon with two monocles. That's genius. See yeah. what we did here? The keyboard breaks down. What do we do? We just make a beautiful joke. There you go. There you go. The game is now starting. It's happening. So. It's like looks like you're gonna have to observe Daniel. Like, oh, now we're gonna do a terrible job casting. Yeah. All right. So get ready uh, for a game. I guess I don't think the Korean commentators have more to say because we're still on camera for some reason. But the game is now loaded. So get ready for MVP up against Bomber. I timed out wrong. They're still talking. All right. That's okay. I'll Ask just say what's else. happening through the whole game. Ask me something else. Ask you something else. Okay, let me think about it. One second. Go into the game. Dun, 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 I'll dun, ask dun, you after dun, you read the show. Okay. Is this song from the video game? Probably. It just the B 